This video shows how to set up and use the Trend Mortis and Tenon jig. It will enable the user to cut a variety of accurate, fully repeatable mortise and tenons with ease. Once set, it will cut both components, the tenon and the mortise, without further adjustment. Simply change the cutter and guide bush on your router, or by using two medium-duty routers, you'll speed up the process even further. This patented jig is adjustable in both planes, allowing front, side and compounded angle tenons to be cut as easily as square-shouldered tenons. Also haunched or mitered tenons. Stopped or stub mortise and tenons. Side angled mortise and tenons. Compound mortise and tenons. Slip tenons, useful in antique furniture restoration or when complex joints are required. The jig also has the capacity to allow doweling to be undertaken with the same degree of accuracy and precision. The largest timber that can be accommodated in the jig is 50 by 150 millimeters, whilst the smallest is 10 by 13 millimeters. All tenons can be machined either square or with a radius at the end plus framing joints and brackets. Large-scale joints such as doors are well within the capacity of the jig. It comes complete with integral clamps, a selection of guide bushes and a high visibility multi-purpose setup bar. By using standard straight flute cutters or the specially designed long reach cutter set, Perfect mortise and tenon joints can be rapidly machined to professional standards. Later we will see how to construct an elegant contemporary chair using all the main techniques possible with this revolutionary invention. See just how fast and really simple it is to use the trend mortise and tenon jig. To reassemble your jig, open the back plate to 45 degrees and lock in place. Screw to the edge of your workbench, or to prevent damage to your bench, you may prefer to use a custom-made baseboard such as this one. Fit the F clamps and vertical tenoning guide in place, noting that the longer screw is used with the pivot bush. Return the back plate to the vertical position. You may wish to check that it is perfectly square to the main body. Remove the transit nuts from the top plate and fit the two adjustable levers. Should you wish to fit the optional dust extraction spout, connect it to the rear of the main body at this stage. Tap the magnets into place. These hold the front dust shield in place and are used only when cutting square tenons and should be laid aside at other times. When fitting the top levers, make sure you employ the washers. To obtain the best results, it is essential that the timber is square and true. And when cut to length, include the length of any tenons. For square-shouldered tenons, position the rail here, with the corresponding style to be mortise clamped here. Should you need to cut a mortise at the end of a style, for example in the style of a cupboard door, or as in the front leg of a chair, position the middle clamp utilizing the red protective cap here. This will provide a center support flush with the back face of the timber. The jig will accept the timber from either the left or right hand side. To machine an angled shoulder, rotate the vertical guide to the required angle. For a front angle, simply move the tilting back plate like this. By using a combination of both the back plate and the vertical guide, compound mortise and tenons can be constructed. Traditionally, a tenon, being one third of the thickness of the stock, will determine the size of the cutter used for the mortise and the size of the guide bush used when cutting the tenon. These are the two variables in the process. 
The constants are that the metal guide bush fitted with the large collar is used for all mortises and the largest cutter, 15.9 millimeters, 5 eighths of an inch, is used to cut all sizes of tenons. One third of the thickness of the timber dictates the thickness of the tenon. Then, by referring to the setup bar, you can determine the correct combination of the mortise cutter and tenon guide bush required. Mark the shoulders on the tenon as normal. Unlike the normal method of marking the tenon with both cheeks marked for removal with this jig. We only need to mark the center line on the end grain. When all parts are marked out, insert a rail vertically ready to form a tenon. Use the setup bar to set the correct height and centering of the tenon timber. Set the depth of cut by lowering the cutter down to the shoulder marks and set the depth stop. Shoulders, either single or at both ends of the tenon, are marked. And the correct opening between the two sliding templates for the shoulders is determined by the steel setup bar. The markings on each side, left and right, are lined up with the shoulder lines according to the tenon width. Then the sliding templates are brought up to the edge of the downstand and locked off. Use the dust shield to direct waste towards the extract port. Cut the tenon in a clockwise motion in incremental passes. For square shouldered tenons, simply reverse the templates. To cut the corresponding mortise, insert the style horizontally and line one end of the mortise, or the haunch line if used, with the same mark on the setup bar as before. Clamp the style in position and machine the mortise simply by moving back and forth between the templates. Because the position of the templates is set for both mortise and tenon just once, the joint fits perfectly each and every time. A set of five long reach quarter inch shank cutters and a similar set of eight millimeter shanks recommended if your router can accept an eight millimeter collet. The dust extraction kit consists of a 58 millimeter spout with a reducer down to a 39 millimeter hose and a front dust shield used when machining straight tenons. The plastic guide bushes supplied with the jig can be replaced with metal guides when extensive use is made of any one particular size. Alternative guide bushes and cutters are also available to machine joints having a tenon width of 3, 7 or 9 sixteenths of an inch.